morning, everybody. Chapter 10 of the real estate course. Chapter 10 is called the law of contract. And what we've done is separated chapter 10 into two parts. Chapter 10 is all about contract and contract in general, not necessarily contracts of real estate. Any contract or every contract must have seven essential elements for it to be a binding contract. If it is missing any, any of the seven, any one of the seven is not uh, there, then it is not a binding contract. Okay, so we'll take uh, a look at the seven essential parts and in part one, we will just discuss the first two. In part two, we will discuss and review the first two and then go through the uh, remaining five. Okay, our learning objectives for part one, contract definition, and the seven essential elements. And in more detail, we'll be discussing the offer. That's the first one. And the second one is the acceptance. So what is a contract? In general, a contract is an agreement. Okay, an agreement, whether it's written or oral. It's an agreement between two or more persons and or between corporations and or between persons and corporation. So it's an agreement that will hold up in court. All contracts should be in writing, okay, to make it so that they can be enforced by a judge if it goes to court. They don't have to be in writing. They can be oral, they can be verbal and still be enforceable, okay? very difficult to do very difficult to enforce verbal oral contracts but they are still enforceable corporations if they're going to get into contracts they must have a legally recognized uh, format so a binding contract is a valid enforceable legal contract with all seven essential elements so let's show you what these seven essential elements are. First one is called an offer. Second is acceptance. So we're going to discuss these two in this chapter or in this part. Third one is consideration. Without consideration, meaning money or gift or uh, uh, seal, it is not a binding contract. Legal intention, legal object, capacity and consent. So those are the seven. We're going to discuss the first two. Okay, you notice deposit is not one of the seven. Okay, a lot of people think that without a deposit, uh, there is no valid contract. Deposit is good faith. Okay, uh, it is not one of the seven uh, parts, elements, essential elements. Okay, so if one out of the seven is not present, then the contract could be void, the contract could be voidable, or the contract could be unenforceable, or the contract could be illegal. Let's have a look at what void, voidable, unenforceable, and illegal, what they are. Void. Void contract is a contract that never existed. It didn't, it didn't happen. Okay. Voidable is a contract which existed, but one of the parties can cancel it. Unenforceable contract is a contract that exists, has all the seven elements of a valid contract, but for some procedural reasons, it cannot be enforced in court. Okay. Illegal contract, again, is a contract which has all the seven elements of a valid contract, but because the activity is an illegal act that is saying maybe a murder, maybe a cheating, maybe gambling, anything to do with illegal act, that means the contract is an illegal contract. It's against public policy or against some law murder, gambling, fraud, any type of cheating, 
that uh, contract is an illegal contract and it is unenforceable. So void is a contract which never existed. Voidable is a contract which has started. It's a, a existing contract, but one of the parties can cancel it. Unenforceable is a contract which has all the seven elements, but it cannot be sued upon in court for some procedural reasons. An illegal contract, any contract that's against policy, statute law, anything uh, sort of murder or gambling contract, contract is an illegal contract. Okay, so if we look at the seven, we have the first one, which is called the offer. An offer is a promise made by one person, specific to one person, from one person to another person. Okay? It has to be specifically made to one party. It should be in writing, but it does not have to be in writing. It can be verbal, can be oral, but it must be all clear as to what the offer is. It must be clearly stated or, or uh, written. Uh, example would be, I will sell you my house for $500,000. That's an offer. Okay? Very clear. It's a promise made by one person specific to another person. Okay? It must be a serious intent to getting into a contract. Okay? It should be should be at what's called arm's length. We discuss more about arm's length. Arm's length contracts are contracts where the parties are not related, where the two parties have their own interests, have their own uh, importance of the contract. So let's take a look at, first of all, in terms of an offer, an offer, we're going to use the words offerer and offeree. Okay? Offerer with an OR is the person making the offer. Okay? And who the person is making the offer to is going to do the step two, which is called the acceptance, but he is called the offeree. The person offer is made to. So keep in mind, memorize these or write them down on the side of the paper that the OR, offerer, O-F-F-E-R, O-R, is the person making the offer, and O-F-F-E-R, double E, is the person offers made to. Okay, so the seven essential elements for a binding contract. Well, we talked about the first one, which is called the offer. Okay, it must be clear. It doesn't have to be in writing. Okay, uh, it's, it's a promise to do something exactly to one person. Now when or how does the offer expire? Okay, obviously if someone, one party makes an offer, the other party accepts and then continue on to the third element, fourth element and so on. Okay, but let's say the offer is out there, when does it end? Okay, first is an offer will end if it's got a time limit, it ends after that time limit. Let's say a, a, an offer is made to a person saying, I will sell you my house. Please reply by 12 o'clock next day. At 12 o'clock next day, it expires. Before that 12 o'clock is when acceptance must happen. If it doesn't happen, then the offer is expired. So if there is a time limit, it's within that time limit. After that time, it's, it is expired. What if there is no time limit? What if a person made the offer and says, usually more uh, uh, things like bicycle. Let's say I say, I will sell you my bicycle or I will sell you my motorcycle. Or let's say a buyer comes in uh, and says, I want to buy your motorcycle. Well, how long, if, if no time li limit has been specified, how long is the time for that uh, offer? Well, it's called reasonable time, and reasonable time is does not have a 
numerical value for your examination. Numeric, uh, reasonable is not one month, it's not one week, it's just reasonable. Reasonable is according to what, what is being done. If, if the contract is about selling of a house, reasonable time would be a day or two. Okay, And if it's uh, anything uh, like stocks, it would be definitely within the same day. So for your exam, it's just within reasonable time. Step number three. Number three is if the offer, person who makes the offer, says, I, let's say I say, I want to sell my house to you, to this person, and please reply by 12, uh, next day, 12 o'clock. Anytime before 12 o'clock, the offer can be rescinded by the person who made the offer, meaning cancel. So if I call, or uh, uh, and I say to the person that I made the offer to, say, I've changed my mind, I do not want to sell my house. That's fine. Offer is, has been canceled and this there is no contract, okay? But it must happen before acceptance. If, party, if the other party has accepted the offer and said, okay, yes, I will buy your house, and before 12 o'clock uh, the person responded, it is too late too late by the person who made the offer to cancel the offer. Number four, a counter offer. A counter offer is when the person who the offer is made to changes something from the original offer. Maybe the price. Let's say I say I will sell you my house for five hundred thousand. Please reply by twelve next day, and before twelve. The other party says, I do not want to buy it for 500. I want to buy it. I will give you 480,000. So now that is a offer made, and that is also called a counter offer. When any one of the two parties dies or becomes insane, then the uh, offer has expired. So very important to remember for your exam, the person making the offer is called the offerer. The person receiving, person whose offer is made to is called the offeree. And the offeree is the person who will either accept or not accept. Okay. So again, how does an offer expire? Offer, if there's a time limit, within the time limit, after the time limit, it has expired. If there is no time, then it's reasonable time. Okay, in terms of rescinding, the person who's made the offer now says, hey, remember we discussed number three there. Number three. Number three, where the offer, whoever made the offer, wants to rescind, meaning cancel it. Well, he doesn't have, there's no rule that he has to do this in writing. But it must be, uh, it must be uh, made so the person who's supposed to accept or reply to the offer gets the information, not necessarily in writing. It needs to be clearly communicated to the offeree. Not necessarily in writing, but it must be clearly communicated if the person who made the offer wants to cancel it before acceptance, it must be communicated very clearly to the offeree. Okay, again, offerer is the person who makes the offer. Offeree is the person whose offer is made to. Okay, now in, in some contracts you can pay, it's not necessarily a deposit, but you can pay some money to keep the op offer open until a certain time. And you know that if the offer is open for a certain time, the person who made the offer can revoke or cancel or rescind the offer before acceptance. But if 
if the person offeree does not want the offerer to rescind, he can pay some money for it, and then the person who makes the offer cannot revoke it within that time limit. So we know a counteroffer is an offer made which changes the original offer. And the counteroffer is made by the offeree, and now the offeree becomes the offerer who made the offer down. Okay, so when one of the parties dies or becomes insane, we said that the uh, offer has ended at that time. Okay, it's very important to know that people can die after the contract has been uh, uh, written up. Then it's that contract is still uh, enforceable uh, against other parties that would be uh, taking over other pe uh, properties and so on. Now, what is not an offer? An offer made to the public. If a person makes an offer to the public and says, anyone want to buy my house, please tell me before 12 o'clock. That is not made. That is not made specifically to one person. That is not a legal offer. That's called a standing offer. Okay, a reward of any kind. That is not a offer. That is a standing offer and it is not one of the seven essential elements, therefore, there would be no contract. Also, any advertising, okay, any advertising, any uh, MLS listing, these are not offers. These are called invitation to bring in offers. Again, this is not a legal offer either. Okay, let's continue. So the seven essential elements for a binding contract. First one's offer, so we discussed offer. Okay, offer is a promise to one party. Okay. Acceptance, we're gonna talk about acceptance now. Well, acceptance, there's two methods or two ways acceptance can be made by the person who's receiving the offer. And the person receiving the offer is called the offeree. Okay, if the offer specifies how the acceptance should be made, then the offeree should accept by that method. Okay. So let's take a look. If the offer specifies that the offer, the acceptance, sorry, should be made by telephone, okay, not how the offer was made. We're not looking at how the offer was made. If the offer says the acceptance should be made by telephone, then the offeree should accept by telephone. If the offer says acceptance should be made by email, then the acceptance should be made by email. In the old days, we used to use this ticker talker, talker system. Okay, The bad one, the worst one, is if the offer says that the acceptance should be made by regular mail, then the offeree should accept by the mail. Okay. Now we're going to talk about how, when acceptance has occurred. Obviously, we know when the person receives the telephone, it's occurred at that time. And email is instantaneous, but mail, regular mail, may take a couple of days to get to the person, the offerer. Okay. But it is considered when the person who's accepting has put the mail has put the mail in the box that is the time of time that is considered acceptance has happened okay the second one second is if the offer does not say how the acceptance should be made then the offeree should accept by the same method as the offer was made. So let's say it doesn't say how the acceptance is to be uh, made, but the offer was made by telephone. That means the acceptance should be made by telephone. If the offer was made by email, 
then the offeree should accept by email. So same method as what was used to make the offer ha has to be used for the acceptance if, the, if it doesn't say anything. Okay, so acceptance, two ways. If the offer specifies how the acceptance should be made, then it should be the, the offeree should ex accept by that method. If the offer does not say how the acceptance is to be made, then the acceptance should be made by the same method as the offer was made. Okay, what about sale of land? Acceptance of sale of land should be in writing. It doesn't say must be in writing for your exam, should be in writing. If it's not in writing, then it may be difficult to enforce in court. What about the acceptance by mail? Acceptance of mail is considered that when the box, when it is put into the box, that is the time when acceptance has happened. Not when the person who made the offer receives the mail. That might be a couple of days down the road. 